ladies and gentlemen, who is now uh, the head of that team as the ambas uh, uh, ambassador of the Asuras of Meru County. Thank you very much. The first gentleman, before the governor became a, a, a governor or woman rep, we were told that uh, he was a cultural ambassador. It's true. Who appointed him the cultural ambassador of Meru County? I can't remember. You can't remember? Yeah. Does he have any other activities? Y your time is up. Two more minutes. Close up. Does he have any other activities he has engaged in that promotes the county of Meru image, the first gentleman, in an independent capacity? Yes. Such as? He has been a musician and uh, uh, as much uh, MC of uh, some functions, and we have also been using him as the MC in our functions before governor was elected. Uh, in Meru County. Thank you very much. Honorable oh. Chairman, that's all for this witness. We yield the witness to the committee and for close examination. Welcome. Time to close examine. Dr. Mwami, you have one hour and a half. Chair, there is an emerging procedural issue. We crave your leave to raise before we begin the cross-examination of the witness. And the issue is as follows. Go ahead. The governor has chosen perfectly within her rights that she will not give evidence. And whereas that's within her rights, and she can't be faulted for it, we find ourselves at a disadvantage. And the disadvantage is as follows. The governor has had ample time to challenge our case and our evidence, and specifically to challenge the evidence of the mover of the motion. Our problem is, even as she exercises our right not to take to the witness stand, she has filed before you several affidavits, one of them by herself, some of them three or four others, by persons who will not also be taking to the witness stand. By law, those affidavits are part of your record. By law, those affidavits are evidence. The whole essence of an affidavit is that it is sworn evidence in writing. To the extent that these people are not being called to testify and specifically to be cross-examined, we run the distinct disadvantage that whereas the governor's side has had the ample opportunity to challenge all our witnesses by way of cross-examination, we deny an equal opportunity. Chair, you just said, what is good for the goose is good for the gander. Now, our problem, Chair, is we can't force persons who are unwilling to testify to take the witness stand. But I also understand, whereas the decision the governor and the deponents of those affidavits have made is perfectly within their rights, the decision they took is not to give evidence in chief. We would want it to be clear from the record that we are making an application 
to cross-examine the governor and our witnesses on the deposition set out in those affidavits. Of course, Chair, they can still choose. They don't want to avail themselves for that cross-examination. If they choose, they have already chosen, they don't want to give evidence in chief, perfectly within their rights. But if they also choose that they don't want to be cross-examined, and we are making the application under Rule 10 of your rules, that they be called so that we cross-examine them. They are not obliged to accede to that request here, but it, it should be clear on the record that they are not amenable to be cross-examined so that in our closing statements, then we'll crave your leave to address you on the implications. Because if that issue is not addressed, you remain with our evidence directly challenged, which is okay, but the evidence taken for gospel truth without the opportunity on our part to show the gaps, to show the contradictions, hopefully some falsehoods, and in short, it will not be a fair trial. This is a trial. The Senate is sitting as a trial chamber. So let them confirm to you. We already have their confirmation that these persons will not testify. But let them also confirm to you for the record whether they also don't want to be cross-examined so that we close that matter and then I can proceed with the business at hand. Would you like to indicate precisely on what it is you would like to cross-examine the governor because he has given a lot of evidence. Are you telling the chair that you want to cross-examine her on her affidavit? On her affidavit, chair, and her formal response to the case because she has filed before you a response to the motion. She has also filed before you an affidavit, which is evidence. We are entitled, of course, subject to what you decide, but by law, we are entitled to test that evidence and every position she has taken in that response and in that affidavit. And it's not just our chair. There are several other people whose affidavits are also on your record on our side. So, to answer your question, Chair, we want to cross-examine her on everything set out in our response and specifically in our affidavit, together with those other affidavits of other witnesses. But she is the Liberty Chair. I must point out this, and I've said it ad nauseum. She is the Liberty to tell you that she is not amenable, because at the end of the day, you cannot force anyone to testify, and even if you do, nothing useful can come from someone you're forcing to speak if they don't want to testify on their own case. Yes, counsel for the governor, we shall hear you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we object to that application being made by my learned friend, Dr. Diankolu. One, for the simple reason that uh, he admits that indeed there is no requirement in law that a governor or any accused person appearing before such a committee can be coerced or forced to testify. That is in the rules and it would be against her right to fair hearing to compel her to utter even one word against her wish. The rules governing these proceedings on a butcher require the governor to elect means within which she will appear before this committee. She has done exactly that by indicating that she will be represented by counsel who are on record and have 
done exactly that. So we cannot offer the governor for cross-examination when she has not tendered any oral evidence before the committee. It will be a prejudice on her part and we risk being accused of violating her rights to fair hearing. Even in normal criminal proceedings, Honorable Chair, any accused person, whether accused of murder, robbery, or any other offense, cannot be forced to testify. They have a right to even remain silent and have the court infer any inference of our silence. What needs to be done is for the prosecutor of this motion to table evidence. Ours is to challenge and punch holes on that evidence, and that's exactly what we have done. The governor's voice has been heard through our advocates. It would be a violation of our right to put her on this stand to be cross-examined against her wish when she has not offered herself for that exercise. Secondly, uh, the affidavits that are on record were supplied to Learned Council. We did indicate in compliance with your rules how many witnesses we intend to rely on. That was not objected to. When we were introducing these affidavits, we do not, we did not at any time indicate that we would call these as witnesses. For the simple reason that the witness we've just brought here, we believe is a worrisome witness who is able to cover all the allegations that have been leveled against the governor, having personally witnessed and having personal knowledge of all the issues that are contained in the motion. Those affidavits merely corroborate what the witness has confirmed of events that he attended personally and has personal knowledge of. Those other witnesses would not really be so much useful to this committee because they are only meant to collaborate the evidence on record. But for the record, let me say this. Save for the governor, we are willing to, for the other witnesses to be summoned by this committee for cross-examination. We have nothing to hide. We are only trying to be considerate on the issues of time, but should this committee feel that there is need for these witnesses to be brought, then we can have them summoned subject to convenience of time. We have no objection to them being cross-examined. Unless I've left out anything, my learned friend can... Thank you. He says there is nothing I've left out. That is all, uh, Honorable Chair. I think then it is clear for purposes of the record, because for order, us we only order, want... Order, order, order. Relax. Relax. Completely. You've made your application. Yes, you have invited your colleague to say something. Uh, Honorable Chair, thank uh, you. Ju just hold. Proceed, proceed, sir. Honorable Chair, thank you. Uh, there are only three issues I wanted to raise. I think the application by my learned friend has not been made at the most appropriate time because in the, in the course of a testimony by our witness, he should have allowed us to complete this witness, he could examine this witness on any issue because we said this is a wholesome witness who would cover anything and everything. And he demonstrated which evidence this witness was not able to uh, respond to upon cross examination. At that juncture, he would have every cloud even to demonstrate to this uh, committee which issues he would like clarified and he would like this committee to benefit from the evidence of any other witness. Uh, then, other issue I would like to emphasize is that uh, when we saw the issues of time, and knowing what uh, can happen, we decided to just get one witness. So the governor has planned her case from filing a response and affidavits as well as uh, fielding a witness who can attest to all those affidavits. The counsel for the county assembly indicates in exact precision that uh, he would like to cross-examine even on the response filed by the governor. This response is not a testimony of the governor. It is a, a pleading or a document signed by the advocates for the governor. So even at that juncture, we'll have a complication, whether it's uh, the advocate who proceeds to the stage to be cross-examined. That's what we are saying. All matters in the response and all the affidavits, and an affidavit is a repository of oral evidence. 
the most the county assembly can do is to demonstrate the affidavits and the evidence in those affidavits has not been corroborated and it's not verifiable. And this witness cannot verify that. Or the other witnesses who have also testified uh, by their affidavits cannot verify that affidavit. Once we get to that point, this committee would consider how else can it be able to verify the challenged or the impeached evidence by the governor. And uh, uh, Honorable Chairman, this motion was brought by the county assembly. They have the duty to discharge the burden of proof, beyond reasonable doubt, before the evidential burden shifts to the county assembly, I mean to, to the governor. That's my contribution, Chair. Thank you. I can see a red light there. Yes, Council, you appear for who? I appear for the County Assembly. My name is Abdi Kadir Sheikh. Uh, chairman, I would like to, of course, the committee and the Chairman are aware. Kadir, hold your horse. We now know you. Lead Council, is it your intention to invite Advocate Abdi Kadir to address us? Chair, you can indulge him. But I, at the, again, at the risk of not taking too much time, I said all we needed in making this request was confirmation from the governor's side that they are not amenable to have the governor cross-examine. We are not even asking you to make a decision on the matter because they have the right to choose. But that right has certain legal consequences which we will address you on and we don't want, at that time, to be accused of the ambush. So we have already had the position that they are not amenable to have the governor cross-examined on affidavit. And since that's all we wanted to go on record, the matter is resolved. So I can continue if you Okay, can. I've heard you. But you can hear my friend, Abdi Kadir. I've heard you. Mm. Before I invite uh, your colleague to come. Are you really being fair to us? Are you attempting to play mind games? You make an application, we listen to it, and before we make a determination, you then make your own determination and you say that to be reflected in the record. The list comes on be, be, be humble, be humble, be humble, counsel. You are not the only person in the, in the... The least you can do, you put your case. Your colleagues have responded. Allow me to fall back to my team. They'll make an input. And if their de determination agrees with what you want to be the determination, then beat. If it doesn't, then raise hell. Uh, don't play mind games with us. Common sense came out like I'm playing mind games with the Senate. The only reason I said the statement that seems to have uh, caught you the wrong way is I acknowledge the governor has a, a certain legal right. She can choose not to take. So even as I make my application, I must be cognizant that she has that right. Yes. Dr. Mudomi, this house has a long history of a tradition of discharging business. Here, the standard practice is that once you bring a matter to the attention of a committee or the entire parliament, that matter ceases being your matter. It becomes the property of the house. So your application has since become the property of this committee. You will bear with us we make a deliberation and a decision will be made quickly. Yes, Ahmed? Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in the rules when... Sorry, Abdi Kader. Yes, thank yes. you, Chairman. Uh, the rules said once the lawyers on each side were, were introduced, I thought we had the audience. Ab Abdi Kader, I want you to introduce yourself and confirm that you are on the list of advocates on this matter. Once you do that, you'll address us. Please, introduce yourself in my, full. My name is Abdi Kadir Sheikh, appearing with the doctor for the assembly members. Yes, second part. Second part. Are you on the list 
o bad I, I think I'm in the list, yes. And when we started the hearing, I was here the first day. I'm not being harsh. It's just that if you are on the list of our advocates, we've been going on from 24th up to now. We've not come out. I could help that. you, Chair. Abdi yeah. Kadir joined our team after we had already. But if you check your answer of yesterday, I had already introduced him as okay. part of my team. But okay. he is not in the original list, so that so we don't spend time calling him. You introduced him on the answer yes, yesterday. Yes. So, Secretariat, uh, uh, without wasting time, you will confirm on Hansard if Abdikadir is one of the councils. He will be allowed to address us. If subsequently we find that he is not one of you, everything that he will have said, we shall strike it out. Abdikadir? Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, uh, I wanted to say, comment on brief comments made by the Council for the Governor. Of course, the committee and the chairman is aware that this committee is not sitting as an appellate. An impeachment of a governor has got two processes. It starts with the assembly and it comes to the Senate to confirm. Since this is an investigative committee to confirm the allegations, the analogy given by my learned friend, like if it is a strict court, absolutely it's not. So I support the motion by my learned friend that it's only fair everybody who can help the committee to give information should do so. The, the comment I wanted to make about the analogy that they have the right not to say anything. It is different from a, from a court set, setting. It is investigative. That's all I wanted to say, my chairman. Your point is made. Colleagues, uh, I now fall back to you. First light. I have seen a light from Sifuna. Yeah, Chairman, uh, as I understand the rules, if you look at uh, Rule 10, it says the committee may at the request of the county assembly or the governor invite or summon any person to appear and give evidence before the committee. So that, uh, uh, in my understanding of that rule, all we need is a request from uh, either the council from uh, the assembly or from the governor that they would want somebody summoned and you and the committee would have the powers to summon that person. As to whether that person uh, intends to participate in these proceedings or not, Mr. Chair, you will see that uh, under Rule 11, there is the option of the county assembly or the governor choosing not to appear before this committee. And uh, my learned colleague here has said that, uh, uh, you know, persons under the Constitution have the right to remain silent. My only question to counsel for the governor is, what is silence? I mean, silence does not mean oral, speaking orally only. If you have filed affidavits before a committee such as this or a court of law, that is you speaking. That is not you maintaining silence. And it cannot be fair to the other side that you file affidavits upon which they do not get opportunity to cross-examine. The way to test the veracity of matters that have been set out in an affidavit is through cross-examination. So the question to counsel would be, what is the committee supposed to do with these affidavits that have been filed by the governor in the absence of opportunity for the assembly to be able to cross-examine uh, that uh, uh, evidence before the committee? Lastly, Mr. Chair, I know my learned colleagues know a rule of evidence concerning documents called the best evidence rule that in fact chair as long as the higher or superior evidence is in possession of a party or may be reached by the party no inferior proof will be allowed my colleagues know what i am talking about in the hierarchy in the hierarchy of witnesses i know you said that you selected these witnesses having considered the factor of time I am just wondering, counsel, in the hierarchy of witnesses, who is the superior witness between your chief of staff and the governor? Who is actually facing those accusations? 
I would want some answers on those questions so that we can guide the committee on how we proceed. I thank you, Chair. Chair. The Senator of Washington Gishu, Senator Mandako. Yeah, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, to follow up on what Senator Sifuna said, uh, Chair, in Rule Number 24, no person other than one A, the Governor, two, a person who has been called as a witness by the county, by the county assembly or by the Governor, or C, a person who is invited or someone to appear and give evidence shall give evidence before the Senate. Uh, the Chairman, in this case, um, Chair, the accused is not the Chief of Staff. And in my considered opinion, Chair, it is actually an opportunity for the Governor uh, to be cross-examined on affidavit just to test the veracity of the information that is in the affidavit. Uh, and I think it just follows what um, the Senator for Nairobi said, uh, Chair. I don't know what that Rule 24, maybe the councils in the House uh, can help us understand. Thank you. I have seen the light by uh, Senator Esther. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, my concern uh, is further to what Senator Sifuna was saying as to whether the witness evidence is sufficient is up to you to determine. But the governor being the wearer of the shoe, uh, surely this would have been a good opportunity and I thought if she's not going to speak, there should be an equalization mechanism to compensate that. I'm saying this because the mover of this motion was heard orally. Thank you, Chair. Very well. Uh, I have seen my Vice Chair. Chair, I was also a bit concerned when the chief of staff is the one giving evidence for the governor because if we have any questions directed to the governor, will he be able to answer them on our behalf? I thought it would be better for her to answer the questions just to clear everything and for us all to have uh, clear evidence and to be able to write everything that we need and to hear also from her. Senator Tobiko. Chair, I want to put it in a, another perspective. Uh, Chair, as uh, the council for the county assembly said yesterday, this is a quasi-judicial process. Uh, because we are not strictly, as in the sense of the word, at the courts. Uh, because if it was you know, a court process, you would have been across the road. Uh, this uh, um, chamber is, the Senate is quasi-judicial because it's also a political process, uh, Chair. And Chair, my, my feeling is that, of course, witness the, the, the governor could choose to uh, be represented by her councils. But Chair, uh, for the satisfaction of everybody, the prime candidate here is the governor. And uh, Chair, I, I, I mean, we, it would be best if there is a way, even in silence, for the governor to take the stand uh, so that she's not only cross-examined by the councils, but so that we are also availed the opportunity to directly engage the governor, even if it is in silence. Thank you. The governor of Mandela. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. The former governor of Mandela and the senator of Mandela, the current. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Chairman. 
now that uh, an application has been made and our attention drawn uh, to uh, you know provisions of rule, rule 10 and considering how the county assembly matter has been executed yesterday it will only be fair and the option not to exercise has been already uh, superseded by affidavits that had already been drawn by the governor. It will only be fair to us as a Senate and this special committee to be able to interrogate the evidence and the county assembly to be able to interrogate the evidence better by the governor availing herself and uh, the committee has the mandate uh, for that matter. My request is the, the chief of staff as the key witness for the governor may not be able to substantively deal with issues to do with position or responsibility of the governor upon which is in question and our impeachment is what we are executing today. It is only fair if the request is made that the governor avails herself and the chair my request is we deliberate and you give a ruling on the same. Thank you, Chair. Yes, Senator Tangwa. Mr. Speaker, as I said yesterday, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, so I allow me to argue like a layman. Mr. Speaker, all I understand is we have the accuser and the accused. Chair. Sure. It's a matter of procedure. Uh, can the Senator for Kiambu address you as the Chair, not Mr. Speaker? All right. Thank you. Chair, <laughs> Mr. Chair. Senator Mandago, relax. It is normal to have a slip of the tongue, but in any case, sometimes I can be so imposing that uh, the young Thangwa sees a speaker in me. Yeah. Thangwa, can you proceed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm, I'm talking about all I see is an accuser and the accused. The governor is the accused. The accuser was the mover of the motion. And I believe the accuser was to come with the witnesses. And so, the governor herself should also come with her witnesses. So, she must stand on the dock. And the moment we started this um, uh, hearing, the charges were read, and she pleaded not guilty. So how come now the governor cannot stand on the dock to be cross-examined on what she pleaded uh, not guilty? Mr. Speaker, I remember yesterday, and I'm trying to help the council uh, from the governor's side, because now I've started reading mischief. We were doing well. Everything was going on well. But yesterday, I remember there was a Catholic priest. And Mr. Speaker, he said he was here because of how he felt, because of his feelings. I'm trying to imagine the gentleman standing here is also here because of how he's feeling about the governor. So do you want me to judge the governor from how the gentleman feels so I urge, and, and I would want to assist the, 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 the side of the governor, the governor is accused. And the issue here is more egocentric than constitutional. We would want to hear, we are, we are here to see, maybe we must start judging the governor. That's the way she is, she doesn't talk to people. She doesn't want even to hear. I don't want to do that now, but I'm trying to help the side of the governor. The accused should stand there so that we can ask those questions. She's seen on TV uh, uh, making utterances, roadside declarations, and then you tell us to examine a chief officer who is not even per se a civil servant. It's more of an organizer of a government, the, 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 the caretaker, the T. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, for this house to be taken, chairperson, 
For this house to be taken with the seriousness it deserves, the governor must stand on the dock. Thank you. I think the final submission is yeah. from the Senator of Lamu. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I want to agree with other members that it is the governor that the 62 accusations has been leveled against her. And uh, in fact, the governor was elected by the good people of Meru. They are watching. They want to hear how the governor is going to exonerate herself from all the claims that has been leveled against her. So it is in all manner of uh, uh, good faith that we want to demand that the governor stand and tell us what she has so that we can be able to do a proper determination as the committee. Thank you, Chair. Yes, okay. Uh, I think that uh, I will start with the side of the Governor's Council. Article uh, 50 of the Constitution, of course, is very clear. And I think that uh, the Governor's Council was drawing us to Article 50I. And we respect that. For the purpose of this committee, however, uh, uh, Chair, if I got the Council of the County Assembly right, the Council is not battling with Article 50 of the Constitution. However, the Council wants us to take a note that should we choose as a committee not to have the Governor being, cross -ex uh, being, being examined by the Council of the uh, County Assembly, then the council is being clever and telling us that there will be legal consequences in terms of when they are making their final submission. I think I, I took a very serious note to that, to the extent that under the standing orders of this particular house, the Senate, uh, I think it is standing order number, uh, it is actually under th the, the third schedule, uh, number 11, uh, Mr. Chair, is in congruence with what the legal council, or the council of the county assembly is talking about. And I'll read it. Where the county assembly or the governor chooses not to appear before the Senate, that fact shall be put on record. And the Senate, the Senate shall proceed with its investigation without further references to the assembly or the governor, but the Senate may, for exceptional reasons to be recorded, permit a later appearance before the Senate by the assembly or the governor. My caution, Chair, is that should we leave the leeway for the Council of the County Assembly to make pronouncements after we have finished the proceedings on this particular matter, then that complicates our own investigations. And because of that, I want to finally say that, Chair, if you look at Volume 1 of the document submitted by the Governor's team, I think it is page 47. The governor concludes by making 66 statements. And that of David particularly isn't signed by the governor's council. It is signed by the governor herself. To that extent, based on those three overarching perspectives that I've brought, I think it will be critical that we accept the, the application by the council so that justice is served for everyone. Thank you, Chair. Uh, very well. Whereas, uh, Council for the County Assembly, your application looked light, but given the interest and the unanimity 
on the part of the senators in supporting your application, I'm forced to make a reasonable decision. But before I make it, allow me to discuss two things. The first thing, uh, the senator of Migori, uh, allow me to discount your views on standing order number 11. If you go back to it, not standing order, on the rules of procedure, number 11. Number 11 only applies in the event the governor had refused to appear. She has come. So let that one rest. The second thing I want to discount is to the governor, the governor's council. Council, please address me so that we go and write something which is reasonable. Address me on this. Are you aware that this affidavit, which belongs to no other person other than your client, the governor, are you aware that if we accept it as it is, and the governor does not take the witness stand. Are you aware that it waters down the weight of this affidavit? Are you aware that if having said what she has said here, she took the stand and responded to these questions, it strengthens her case? Are you aware? Please address me before I ask the council to also address me. Thank you, Honorable Chair, for that question. Indeed, I am aware of those sentiments. And uh, just to discount some of the fears from the honorable members, the governor has no mischief. The governor has nothing to fear. The governor had not refused to tender evidence. It was just because of the way we arranged our defense that we sought to have one key witness that would somehow sum up all the evidence that all the other witnesses would have brought before this uh, Senate on the justification that this particular witness was personally available and attended all those functions where the governor is accused of uttering certain words and violating the law in the course of making those words. But uh, having heard the sentiments of the committee, we have consulted with our client and the client has agreed to be cross-examined on the ground of the basis of the affidavit that she has brought before this court. But then we are also begging for time to re-examine and fix any loopholes or punches that might have thrown away during cross-examination. So we are amenable to that request. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and and so before so that, Chair, sorry to cut you. So we request that then we have this witness uh, dispensed with after uh, cross-examination and re-examination. Re then we can have the governor come in, after which we shall beg for 20 to 30 minutes to prepare the governor, considering that she had not prepared for this particular eventuality. Thank you. Thank you very much. So that um, our records reflect proceedings of reasonable men and women, let us conclude this by allowing the the governor's, the, the county assembly senator to also address me. I'll, I'll, sp I'll speak to the issues you have raised. You address me on the following. Chair, uh, if, if, on the following. Yes. You address me on the following. Yes, Chair. On the following. I'm here to tell you what I would like you to address, so that it helps us to look neat and reasonable. Uh, I'm drawing your attention to Article 50. Sabbatical 2. Chair, on a point of order, Chair, yes. point of order, yes. uh, I'm being asked on a humanitarian basis that you allow the witness to sit as we dispense. Uh, 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 he's, 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 looking, he's looking like he can uh, uh, exit this proceedings. He can Chair. <laughs> in fact, he's the most important person in the room, maybe. So please, witness, you're free to take your seat for the time being. Thank you, the Senator of Nairobi. This is why you are the senator of Nairobi, the county of everybody. 
Yes, uh, Council, uh, I want to draw your attention to Article 50, sub Article 2, L, which I read. This constitution is alive 24-7, and it is never suspended. What would you do if I declined your request on the strength that the constitution gives this governor the right in L to refuse, I'm reading, quote, to refuse to give self-incriminating evidence. Address me on that one. Then I'll discharge what you have uh, applied for, Council for Governor, and we proceed. Chair, the rule against self-incrimination is a rule that governs criminal proceedings. The proceedings before the Senate are neither criminal nor civil. This position, and my colleagues can confirm this, has been affirmed in several decisions emanating from this Senate. One of them is the case of Justice Karioki Nyaga. So proceed. These consultations are very useful. Fair, fair enough, Chair. So I was saying, impeachment proceedings, though quasi-judicial, are not analogous to civil proceedings in the High Court or any other court. Neither are they analogous to criminal proceedings before the ordinary courts, which is to say the essence of the process we are going through is not to ultimately find the governor of any civil liability or any criminal culpability. And I was therefore telling you that position has been litigated in virtually every impeachment proceeding that has come before this Senate. And the constant decision of the Supreme Court, I'm only mentioning two because they should be in our volume two of our Bado. The constant position from the Supreme Court is that those proceedings are neither civil nor criminal and they should not be treated as forums for attributing civil liability. And I think that dispenses of another issue that has been coming up before you, which is, why has in so and so complained? Why are you complaining on his behalf? Those decisions I said are in the decision about the impeachment of Mike Sonko, who was impeached by this house, and the Supreme Court affirmed that impeachment. That, the same position chair can be found from another decision of the Supreme Court, in a case called Justice Karioki Nyaga, was as Martin Wambora Nyaga, or rather just as Karioki Mate, was as Martin Wambora Nyaga, and it should, unless I'm mistaken, also be in our volume two, but at any rate, I am aware, I'm told, Chair, it is at volume two, at page 69, the case of Martin, that is Supreme Court petition number 32 of 2014. And I just told you, the same position is reiterated. So to your specific question, therefore, the governor cannot be hard to say if I ask her a question in cross-examination. She cannot be hard to tell you, I will refuse to answer that question because I run the risk of self-incrimination. While still on the matter, Chair, it is basic law, and all my colleagues will agree, that proceedings before a body like yours are privileged. Anything a witness says in this chamber 
cannot later on be used as the basis for prosecuting them for a criminal offense or for incurring civil liability. That is the whole essence. And it's not just the witness. Even anything any senator says, the reason it is privileged chair is so that the witness will have the absolute comfort to tell you the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth without the fear that the answers they give you from the Supreme Court decision uh, of Sonko Chair, the relevant paragraph is at page 158 of volume 2 of our documents. Page 158, and the paragraph is 148. That was just pointing to me. So, Chair, it is not open to any witness in proceedings such as those before you to refuse to answer a question on the ground that the answer to that question, if given, would incriminate them because they enjoy absolute privilege for utterances made before the Senate. But they have the right, by the article you cited, one of the paragraphs in Article 50, they have the right to refuse to give evidence. Thank you, Council. I'm glad and happy that you have addressed me. Uh, members, we have a witness who is the star witness, and therefore he's going to demand for a lot of attention from all of you. It will take quite a bit of time. So if I allow that we conclude his case, then we shall require to, we, we want to break to make a decision on this one, then we require to break again to go and prepare the governor to come and take the witness stand. I think those too many projects will waste too much time. So on request, counsel for the governor, you kill two birds with one stone. We're going to break. The decision concerning this is being made now. And then during that time, you do what you would have done in the second breakout. Chair. So what is the decision? Chair, just a minute. Yes. I don't understand the necessity of a break to make a decision. No, I'm making when... a decision now. I'm making the decision okay. now. Yeah. The decision we want to make was going to be difficult and maybe academic if the position of the governor was that she was not taking the stand. But because she has agreed to take the stand, we congratulate her for being cooperative and look forward to her on the witness uh, stand. Uh, for now, I want to request that we adjourn. We give everybody one hour. During that one hour, you uh, uh, grab a bite, and during that one hour, prepare your governor for the forthcoming uh, interventions. Thank you, members. or uh, whatever you decide, Chairman. That is it. Mandago, you have something? Uh, thank you very much, Chair. This is Senator Mandago for Sengisha, and my apologies, I was not able to be here yesterday, but I followed the proceedings very keenly. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, listening to the counsel for the governor, um, I really don't understand why, if they are confident themselves when they submitted this additional evidence as to why the account assembly council cannot prosecute the same. So I think in the interest of fairness, because we, we want to have as much information as possible as a committee to enable us to make a fair and just decision as a chairman, I think it's only fair that the account assembly council is given opportunity to look at the, um, to, to cross-examine this new evidence. Thank you. Uh, Senator Tobiko. 
Chair, I think maybe, you know, what is clear, of course, that it was already allowed yesterday for to be done at cross-examination. But I think what the uh, Council for the County Assembly is asking is if they can uh, put in written 